Hi everyone, in this video we will learn how to calculate percents using Python. If you want to code along with me through the tutorial, in the description I linked a notebook in GitHub, and if you have a Google account you can use Google Colab to code for free. First let us define a percent. Percent means per 100. Percents can be expressed with the percent sign. We will first calculate a percent in terms of a proportion. A proportion is a type of ratio that relates a part to a whole. For a proportion, a percent can range from 0% to 100%. For example, if a quiz has 10 questions and each question is worth one point, then zero correct answers out of 10 is 0%, five correct answers out of 10 is 50%, and 10 correct answers out of 10 is 100%. Let us run these calculations within Python. First, I am going to call on the print function. The print function will allow us to print out our calculation. Within the print function, we are going to print out the calculation using f-strings. An f-string is started by typing f at the beginning of single or double quotations. Then within the curly braces, we put in the calculation. The curly braces are going to be the variable part of the print which means that it can change based on a variable input inside. Everything outside of the curly braces, but within the quotations, will be constant. To get the proportion, I am going to take the number of correct answers divided by the total questions and multiply it by 100 to get the percent. I am going to put the percent sign outside of the curly braces. I'm going to copy and create two more lines, one for 10 correct answers and one for five correct answers. When we run it, we can see that we have the correct proportions. For zero correct answers, we have 0%. For five correct answers, we have 50%. And for 10 correct answers, we have 100%. A percent can be negative if it reflects a rate of change. For example, if we have 20 students at the beginning of the semester in a quantum physics course, but 5 students drop the class, this is an example of a negative rate change. We will calculate this within Python using two different methods. For the first method, we are going to take the current value divided by the previous value, subtract that by 1, and multiply by 100 to get the rate change, which should be negative 25%. Within Python, I am going to call the print function, then I am going to call the f string, then within the curly braces, I am going to input 15 divided by 20 in parentheses, subtract that by 1 in parentheses, then multiply by 100. And like before, I am going to put a percent on the outside. For the output, we have the expected rate of negative 25%. For the second method to find the rate, we can take the current value, subtract it by the previous value, take that difference and divide it by the previous value, then multiply it by 100, and we should get negative 25% again. Let us implement this in Python. In the numerator, be sure to include the difference 15 minus 20 within parentheses. And we have our expected rate of negative 25% again. In this example, the lower bound for the negative rate is negative 100%, which would mean all students drop from the class. There cannot be a percent value lower than this because you cannot have more students drop the class than are on the class roster. You may find if you try to find the percent for a given number, Python will return an answer that is a bit off than what was expected. For example, if 4 students drop out of a class of 20, we expect the rate of change to be negative 20%. The way Python deals with floating point numbers, which can also include fractions, the output we receive is negative 19.9 repeating. Python uses binary division to divide numbers. The explanation for this is beyond the scope of this tutorial, but for those that want a technical explanation, I link the IEEE standard for floating point arithmetic. Let us run the calculation in Python. Python calculated the rate at negative 19.9% repeating. A way to adjust for this in Python is to use the round function. The round function takes two parameters. First, the number that is being rounded is input. I am going to copy and paste it in there. Second, the number of digits to round to. I am going to round to zero, which is the nearest whole number. 
we now have our expected rate of negative 20%. There are also situations where a percent can be above 100% when it comes to a rate of change. For example, a statistics class has 10 students. The course was well received by the students in the first class, and 15 other students signed up for a total of 25 students. The rate of change is 150%. Let us calculate this in Python. In the numerator, I am going to put the current value, 25 students, divided by the initial class value, 10 students, subtracted by 1, and multiply by 100. And we get 150%. Now we will use the second method. In the numerator, I will take the difference of the current value of students, which is 25, subtracted by the initial amount of students, which is 10, divided by 10, and multiplied by 100. As expected, we have 150%. Theoretically, the upper bound for the growth rate is infinite, meaning you can have infinite number of students join your class. In a practical application, the class's growth is probably limited to the number of chairs within the class. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope that this video was helpful. In the references section, I included a link to an academic tutorial if you want more resources for calculating percents. If you found the video helpful, feel free to like and subscribe. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn, X, GitHub, Medium, and Odyssey. I also have a podcast called The Aspiring STEM Geek, which you can check out on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Audible, and iHeartRadio. Thanks everyone for watching and happy coding.